Hello, good evening. Okay, we are in another session. We are going to begin with the session number two of the week number three, because we are uh, starting the uh, week number three and we are going to have just two more days, tomorrow and the next day. And we are going to end the week number three and then we are going to begin with uh, week number four. Tell me, Maximo. Is everything okay? Sure. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, um, and remember that yesterday we were talking about uh, the, the topic wishes or expressing wishes. And today we are going to continue with that part, but today we are going to have like a long explanation of that topic because um, yesterday we were saying that this one is kind of complicated topic to understand. Because we need to uh, remember the uses of some structures or the tenses that we are going to use. So for today's session, I have like, we are going to have a short review of the structures that we are using in the different tenses that we have. And we are going to see the structures for the present tenses in, uh, for the uh, past tenses. But we are not going to have like the future tenses because in this case, we are going to use auxiliaries for that part. We are going to see um, in some example, because I have um, like eight sentences that we are going to explain one by one what is the meaning of the sentence and how can we transform those sentences into this structure of the wish. And also we are going to uh, have like the couples that we can create call, uh, with the, um, the structures or the tenses, because in this case, remember that we are using a specific tense uh, to create that sentence with wish. I have like, yes, I have like a long explanation about this topic because I need you to understand uh, what is the use that we can give for that sentences. And also what is the meaning that we are creating with these sentences. So in that case, I'm going to explain the sentence how can we transform? What are the tenses that we are going to use? And also we are going to see the auxiliaries that we can use to create that sentences and the structure that we are going to use for each sentence. So we are going to begin with the details of this topic. And at the end, we are going to have like some exercises in which we are going to transform those sentences into this kind of a structure that, that is the I wish. And because I'm going to use that kind of sentences because uh, I need you to understand what is the real meaning or uh, to understand that in reality, this is not like very complicated but we need to make some deep uh, research for this topic. 
Así que vamos a comenzar con el tema de wishes. Ayer ya hablábamos un poco sobre eso. Hoy vamos a profundizar. Pero en el caso de la sesión de hoy, lo vamos a hacer de manera diferente porque vamos a trabajar directamente con los ejercicios. Vamos a trabajar directamente con las oraciones y las vamos a ir eh, desarrollando cada una de ellas, explicando cuáles son las partes que contienen. And we are going to see first what are the structures that we are going to use for the different tenses. First, you know that we have three different tenses in English that is uh, past, present, and future. And each Okay, I'm sorry for that. I was saying that we have four, I mean, three times or three tenses. And each tense has like four, four more tenses that we are going to have for the present, for the past, and for the future. So in this case, we are going to see what are the four tenses or the structures that we are going to use for the four tenses of the present and the past. But remember that we are not going to use the tenses of the future or the elements of the future, because in that case, when we are going to use the future, we are going to have two auxiliaries. And also we are going to explain. Okay, I'm so sorry for that, but I am back again. So we are going to begin because I don't want to waste more time in this uh, situation. So we are going to begin with the explanation and we are going to have the document on the screen and we are going to begin with the first part that in this case I'm going to have the structures that we are going to use and why we are going to have this structure because we are going to need it for the, uh, the sentence that we are going to create. So the structures that we have this is just like a review, structures. In this case, we have, we're going to begin with the present. And we have the present simple, or the simple present as you want to say. In this case, we have uh, two different structures. One is the verb to be, that R is um and R. And we already know that, but in this case, it's just to remember what are the structures that we have. And then for the verbs, in this case, we have the base form. And third person, ES, in some cases. Then we have the present perfect. In the present perfect, we have have and has. And then we have the past participle of the verbs. Cuando hablamos del pasado participio, si ustedes tienen la lista de los verbos o tienen algún listado de verbos, ustedes encuentran tres columnas. El pasado participio es la última columna que encontramos nosotros eh, ahí, ¿verdad? So in that case, we can use that kind of list that we have in, um, if we have it in PDF or something like that. So in that case, we are going to use that verb, that is the past participle. Then we have the present continuous. In this case, the present continuous, it's not like we are going to use it a lot in this case, because the continuous is not like um, something that will change the meaning of the of the structure that we are going to use. So in this case, the most used tenses are the present simple and the present perfect, and also the, the simple past and the uh, past perfect is, are the, the, 
the tenses that we are going to use the most. So in that case, we're just going to write the other uh, structures, but in this case, we have number one and number two, and that's it. So in this case, the present continues. Is the am um, is R. Plus the verb with ing. And the last one for the present is the present perfect continuous. And in this one, we have have and has plus being. Plus the verb to be, I mean the verb with ing. So those are the structures for the present tense. Esas son las estructuras que nosotros utilizamos para construir oraciones en presente. Tenemos el presente simple, el presente perfecto, el presente continuo y el presente perfecto continuo. Now we are going to see the past and the tenses that we have in past. And we have the first one that is the past simple or simple past. And in this one, we have the verb plus ed. That in this case is when we have like the, the regular form of the verb, but you know that we have the irregular form. But in this case, we are going just to know this, that, um, that kind of verb. So in this case, we are just going to write the ED, but you know that in the case of the irregular is different. And also we can use the didn't in this kind of sentence. Then we are going to have the past continuous. Then in this case, we're going to use was and where. And you know that in this case, we're going to use the verbs with ing. Then we have the past perfect symbol or the past uh, perfect. And in this one, we have this one that is had plus the past participle. And the last one, the past perfect continues. We had had been plus the verb in ing. Okay, this is the first part that we need to focus on these ones. The present simple or simple present and the present perfect. And in this one, we have the simple past and the past perfect. And in some cases, we are going to use this one, the past perfect continuous. Estas son las estructuras que más vamos a ver nosotros en este tipo de oraciones, pero estas son más que todo para los inicios. Vamos a ver cómo lo vamos a utilizar y vamos a ir formando parejas. Por ejemplo, si tenemos el presente, el simple present, ¿con quién lo vamos a emparejar? En ese caso sería con el pasado porque en ese caso estamos hablando de ir un paso hacia atrás. But this is just like a review and we are going to um, see these structures again while we are writing our sentences. Esto lo vamos a tener ahí para regresar cada vez que necesitemos escribir una oración. So, 
we are going to begin with the details that we can use. In this case, I'm going to write this, but also I'm going to explain it. This thing that I'm going to say, maybe it's going to make this, um, this structure easier to understand because we are going to know what are the couples that we can make to create this kind of, of sentences. The first thing that we need to know is that we are going to have two sentences. We are going to have one that is a real situation and the other one that is an unreal situation. Vamos a tener dos oraciones. Una situación real, una situación irreal. Siempre tenemos que tener eso en cuenta. Una situación real, que es lo que está pasando, y una situación irreal es the thing that I am wishing. Desde el momento que yo estoy deseando que algo cambie, ya es una situación irreal. Cuando ya estoy incluyendo yo el I wish, ya es una situación irreal. Y lo vamos a trabajar así. Vamos a tener una oración real o situación real y una situación irreal. So let me put here. When we are working with the pronoun I, wish, with the complement wish, in Spanish, we can translate it as ojalá. When we have that expressions, we can say that we are saying ojalá. With the other pronouns, uh, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they, we can translate it as desear o gustar, but in this case, it's not, um, we're not going to use the same uh, translation as the verb like, because in that case, we like something and we have control over that situation. And in this case, we don't have the control. So in this case, we are going to use it gustar, but we don't have control for that situation because it's something unreal. And also we can translate it as desearía o gustaría. So when we are uh, having I wish with the pronoun I is ojalá. And when we are using with the other pronouns, we can translate it as desear o gustar, but with no control over the situation. So I'm going to write that and we are going to have like those elements in, um, involved in that uh, explanation. So now we are going to see what are the couples that we are going to make to create those sentences. Remember, we have two uh, situations. One is real and one is unreal. So the first one, the first um, tense is the real tense. So we are going to say, or I mean the real situation. We are going to put real situation. And this one will have an unreal situation. I'm going to uh, mark this one in yellow and this one in green. Situación real, situación irreal. 
The first one that we're going to have is the past simple. In this case, we are going to begin with past simple or simple past. Simple past. And I'm going to insert this one. The simple past is going to be with past perfect. Si nuestra situación real está en simple past, nuestra situación irreal va a ser en pasado perfecto. That is the first couple that we have. Then, if we have the past perfect, we are going to move, and we have past perfect. This one will be in past perfect also. Esta se va a mantener así, porque vamos a utilizar más que todo el pasado perfecto y el simple past. So in this case, we are going to maintain the same structure. That's the first couples. Simple past with past perfect and past perfect with past perfect. If we have to be in past, We are going to have this one with the past perfect. Ahí tenemos ya nuestras eh, uniones o nuestras parejas. Now, again, we are going to have these ones at the beginning because that's making the different kind of sentence that we have. This one, present. In this case, we are going to have present. The simple present. Let's see what is the couple of this one. The simple present, it's going to be with past simple or simple past in this case. Then, if we have present perfect, yes, if we have present perfect, we are going to use it with We are going to use it with past perfect. And if we have to be in present, in this case, we are going to use where. So, in this case, if we have to be present, we are going to use to be in past, but we are, we are not going to use the, uh, the was that we are like, uh, we know that we can use was with uh, some um, pronouns. In this case, you are going to use where with all the pronouns that you have. Why? Because in that case, it's something more um, like formal. You can use was and that's okay, but in that case it's something very, very informal. 
And in this kind of structures, you need to use where because it sounds more formal and, and that's the construction that they give to these kind of sentences. So in this case, you're going to use where for all the subjects that you have. And you can use once, but in that case, it's like more informal. So what is the structure that we are going to follow to create that um, unreal situation? Because that's the thing that we need to learn how to create the sentences in unreal situation or using wish. So we are going to see what is the structure that we are going to use. And in this case, we are going to complete with the elements that we are going to have in our sentences. So in this case, the structure is, yesterday we were um, learning this structure, but we are going to remember the structure again. We have the subject, then we have wish, then we have the other subject, And we have the unreal situation. And in this case, it's related with the tense that we have. So we are going to um, write in the uh, a specific tense that we're going to use for the unreal situation. And we are going to see the first sentence. We are going to construct, we are going to write the first example. So in this case, uh, because I'm, I'm going to, I am wanting to, to take this very, very clear that we are going to take a real situation or something that happens in that moment. And we are going to transform in something that is not real. So in that case, we are going to have a base and that same uh, sentence, we are going to transform into something kind of the same thing, but with some extra elements. Así que vamos a tomar una situación real, algo que está pasando, y la vamos a transformar. Le vamos a agregar algunos elementos y lo vamos a convertir en una situación y real, desde el momento que deseamos, desde el momento que decimos ojalá, ya la estamos convirtiendo en una oración o una situación irreal. Entonces vamos a tener una base, que es nuestra oración, nuestra situación real, y esa misma oración la vamos a transformar en una situación irreal. Y vamos a ir siempre un tiempo atrás usando esos grupos que ya tenemos ahí, esas parejitas que ya formamos. So, we are going to see the first example. Number one, we have the following sentence. I didn't study this topic at school. I didn't study this topic at school. And we can translate this sentence into, like, yo no estudié este tema en la escuela. Yo no estudié este tema en la escuela. But what is the tense of this sentence? ¿Cuál es el tiempo de esta oración? Simple past. Exactly. Simple past. Because we are using this one that is the auxiliary did in negative, but in this case, it is not like we are going to change something. So we are going to mark here the tenses. In this case is simple past or past simple. So in that case, we know what is the first tense that we have. So in this one, in this one, what is the tense that we are going to use for the unreal situation? Si ya tenemos el simple past para la situación real, ¿cuál es el tiempo que vamos a utilizar para la situación irreal? Simple 
past perfect. Good, good. We are going to use the structure of the past perfect. So we are going to see what is the structure for the past perfect. We are going to have this auxiliary that is had with the past participle of the verb. But we are going to complete the structure. I'm going to write the structure again here and we are going to complete the elements that we have in the structure. First, we need a subject, then wish, then the other subject, and the unreal situation. For this one, the subject, the subject that, I, that I am using for this sentence is I, because I am talking about me. I is the first subject. Then I'm going to write wish. I wish, in this case, I need to add the other subject. But in this case, I am just talking about something that is happening to me. So my other subject is also I, because I am talking just about me. And then I'm going to write I again. I wish I, and we are going to add the auxiliary had. I wish I had, and the verb study in past participle, what is a study in that uh, structure? Study. Good, I had studied this topic. And that is the structure, that is the unreal situation. And we can translate that sentence into, ojalá yo hubiese estudiado ese tema. Yo tengo ya mi oración, que es mi situación real. I didn't study this topic at school. Yo no estudié esta, este tema en la escuela. But I wish I had studied this topic because it is in, interesting. Ojalá yo hubiese o hubiera estudiado este tema. Porque me pareció interesante. No me estoy quejando en realidad. No me estoy arrepintiendo de no haberlo hecho, sino que me hubiera gustado. So in that case, it's unreal situation because I didn't do it in a school. So that is the construction of the sentence. But let me take this out because it is going to be better if I write it like this here. So in this case, we can see the differences that we have in the sentence. So this is the first example. We are going to see the other one. The number two. So we have here, the weather in this city is pretty cold. The weather in this city is pretty cold. So in this case, what is the tense that we are using? Simple present. Good, we are using the simple present, but in this case, we are using the part of the verb to be, right? Because in this case, we have here the verb is. So in that case, we have the verb to be in that structure. That is this one. Let me see, let me see. This one, to be in present, and we are going to use where for the uh, structure of the unreal situation. Let's see, we are going to transform. Again, we are going to have the subject. In this case, I am talking about the weather. I am talking about the weather and I'm going to write I. I wish, what is the second subject? I, I. am talking. Mm -mm. I am talking about what? The weather. Uh-huh, the, the weather. I wish the weather. And in this case, I'm going to use it. 
what is the structure in this case here? The weather was. Mm, yes, you can use was, but in this case, we are going to use where. Where. Mm -hmm. You can use was, and it is not like it is not allowed to use that part of the structure, but it say that it's more formal to use where. So we are going to use where in all the sentences that we are going to use. So I wish the weather were in this case, we are going to make it negative because we are going to say, ojalá el clima no fuera tan frío. So in this case, we're, going, uh -huh, we're not so cold. And we have the second sentence. Because in that case, if we are not uh, using the not, we are saying, ojalá el clima fuera tan frío. And that is not the thing that we're going to say. In that case is, I wish the weather were not so cold. Ojalá el clima no fuera tan frío. But the reality is that the weather is really cold in that city. So in that case, we are just thinking about the situation. So we have two sentences. Are we okay with that uh, sentences? Estamos bien con las explicaciones de esas dos oraciones hasta el momento? Yes, teacher. Okay. For the next one, for the number three, we are going to use the, uh, the future. But in this case, I'm going to add something there because I am using just the past and the present, but we don't have the information for the future. What are the, um, the structure or the sentences or how can we create sentences in future with this structure. We have also both the real situation and the unreal situation. But in this case, we are going to have like in the future, vamos a tenerlos como quejas o sugerencias. En este caso, cuando hablamos de oraciones en futuro, van a ser de quejas o sugerencia. And we are going to use would and could. Would and could. No vamos a tener como el will, el going to, ni nada por el estilo. It's would and could. But this second one that is could, lo vamos a utilizar más que todo con el I y el we. I and we. And also this one is when we have like, or we are talking about ability or permissions. Cuando vayamos a hablar de habilidades o de permisos o de permitir algo, vamos a utilizar el call, pero para las demás oraciones vamos a utilizar el will. Sí se podrían utilizar, pero no es como que le estamos pidiendo el permiso o eh, diciéndole a alguien que en realidad va a utilizar una habilidad para hacer algo. So in that case, we're going to use will for the future in almost all the cases, but we are going to see what are the examples. So we have in the number three, we are going to use the future. And it says our best friend, our best friend won't go to class. So in this case, we have future, future negative. And we are saying that nuestro mejor amigo no irá a clases. So that's the sentence that we have. Now, we are going to construct the unreal situation. Who is the people or who is the person or who is the one that is wishing something? ¿Quién es o quiénes son los que están deseando algo? We. We. Good. We wish. And what is the second subject? Who is the, the, the person on this sentence? 
best friends. Good. We with our best friend. And we are going to use would for this unreal situation. Would go to class. We are going to complete with that. Because we're saying desearíamos que nuestro mejor amigo fuera a clases. Ahí es donde entra el desearíamos. Porque ya decíamos que el I wish es como el ojalá. Y con todos los demás eh, pronombres es yo desearía o me gustaría que esta situación pasara. So in that case, we have this uh, structure with the future. Then we have the other one, number four. We have here, my father, my father hates when she does that, when she shows that. Mi padre odia cuando ella hace eso. What is the tense of this sentence? Simple present. Good, simple present. And we have here, hates. That is the structure. So we are going to use the simple present and we are going to go one step back and we are going to use the past, the simple past in this case. But for this one, mm, we are going to... Let's see. We're going to do it like a suggestion. Lo vamos a hacer como una sugerencia. Para eso vamos a utilizar la estructura del futuro. Because maybe she's complaining about a, a situation or an action that she is doing. Así que como lo vemos, como una, una queja, directamente pasaríamos a una estructura en futuro. Cuando ustedes ven este tipo de oraciones donde dice, ah, a él no le gusta que ella haga eso, a él no le gusta que ellos hicieran eso, a él le gustaría que cambiara alguna situación, estamos hablando de una queja. Y como el futuro sirve para hablar de quejas y de sugerencias, lo vamos a transformar hacia esa... Eh, estructura. Así que en lugar de irnos hacia atrás, lo vamos a hacer con la estructura del futuro. So, in that case, we can say in Spanish, my, I mean, mi padre desearía que ella no hiciera eso. He wants eh, she to change something. So, in that case, we are going to construct that sentence. So, in that case, I am not talking about the situation. In that case, how can I translate my, mi padre desearía que ella no hiciera eso? ¿Cuál es el primer sujeto que vamos a utilizar si queremos traducir esa oración? My father. Good, my father. This one. ¿Solo lo dejamos así o le agregamos algo al wish? Okay. Wishes. Ah, my father wishes. Who? ¿Cuál es el segundo sujeto? She. She. Good. And in this case, we are going to add again would. Would not do that. ¿Por qué no usamos el could? Porque no le estamos obligando a hacerlo, sino que le gustaría a él que no lo hiciera. Si se hiciera como una obligación or something like that, we uh, can use cool, but in this case we are going to use would. Así que si tenemos oraciones que parezcan queja o algo por el estilo, directamente utilizamos la estructura del would. We are going to see number five. Number five. I don't. I don't have a big house. 
No tengo una casa grande. This one. Mm, what is the tense of this sentence? Simple present. Uh -huh, good. Negative. Yes, in that case, it's yes, simple present negative. So, we are going to have two. We are going to have two uh, sentences that we can create in the unreal situation. We are going to have one that is in past and in the other one is like in future. So we are going to have two. Vamos a tener dos, una que va a ser irse para el pasado con la estructura del pasado y la otra en el futuro porque podría ser eh, algo que quisiéramos cambiar o que vamos a cambiar en el futuro. Así que vamos a tener dos opciones. The first one. The subject is I because I am saying that I don't have a big house. So I wish I what is the past that we are going to use in this case? Had. Had. Good. I wish I, I had a big house. And that's the first sentence. I wish I had a big house. Es como me hubiera gustado tener una casa grande. And in the second one, when we are talking about a situation in the future that maybe it could be that we are going to change that house, we can write again the same uh, subjects. I wish I could have good. Uh, good. I could have. I could have a big house. Because in that case, uh, we are talking like maybe an ability to change that situation. So in that case, we are using could. So for this one, we can have like two options. And we are almost done with the example because I have eight and we are in number six already. So number six. In this case, we have a question. Why didn't I meet you before? Why didn't I? I mean, didn't I meet you before? This question is in? Past. Past, in simple past negative. So, someone is asking, why didn't I meet you before? And uh, it's in, in Spanish is, ¿Por qué no te conocí antes? That is the question. ¿Por qué no te conocí antes? And we are going to transform that question into a sentence. And we are going to say, ojalá yo te hubiese conocido antes. Ojalá yo te hubiese conocido antes. Y desde el momento que decimos ojalá, ponemos I wish. Wish. Who? What is the second one? I. Uh -huh. I, and in this case, we are going to use, if we have the simple past, we are going to use, what is the structure that we are going to use for the simple past? I have. I had, what? The verb meet in past met. participle, uh -huh. met. good. I wish I had met you before. And that is the sentence. I wish I had met you before. That's why we need to keep in mind the structures. And also we need to have our list of verbs because we are going to use it for this kind of sentence. So we need to remember all the structures. But we are going to see these structures again in the other topic that we have for this week. So we are with the number seven. Number seven. And I think we're going to end these um, examples just on time. Well, we have, Laura had never tried to speak English. Laura had never tried to speak 
English. So, what is the tense of this sentence? Past perfect. Good, it's past perfect. Why? Because we have here had, and here we have the verb try. That is like the structure that we use for this uh, tense that is the past perfect. So in this case, you know that we are going to use again the past perfect for this kind of sentence. So in this case, we are talking about Laura and we are going to say Laura nunca había intentado hablar inglés. But Laura desearía que ella misma, o sea, se está hablando de ella misma, que ella hubiese intentado hablar inglés. So, who is the uh, subject in this sentence? Laura. And we can transform in, uh, in the pronoun? She. She, good. She what? She. She wishes she again. What is the structure? In that case, we're going to write again, had tried. Vamos a tener otra vez el mismo. Had tried to speak. English. En este caso estamos repitiendo casi la misma estructura porque estamos siguiendo el mismo tense. And we have the number eight, the last one of these examples. And the last one of this explanation. We have the number eight. You haven't practicing, I mean, you haven't been Practicing enough. I mean, enough. What is the structure of this sentence? Present perfect. Good, present perfect. We have haven't been. And we're going here, present perfect. For the present perfect, we are going to have the past perfect. That is the couple of this one. But in this case, you can see, ah, but we have like continuous. Yes, but in that case, it is not going to change anything because in that case, it is not going to affect the construction of the sentence. So in that case, we are going to say, tú no has estado practicando lo suficiente. That's the meaning of the sentence. And we are going to transform into, ojalá tú hubieses estado practicando lo suficiente. Ojalá tú. El ojalá ya sabemos que empieza con cuál. I. I, which, who. What is the second you. subject? You, good. I wish you, and we are going to have the past had been and we are going to take the continuous practicing enough enough good and there we have the sentences there we have all the sentences that we have for this uh, topic so it's better now the information that we have about the wish So just making a little review because it's almost time to end. So vamos a hacer un pequeño and a quick review of this topic. Sure things. 
it's easier when we have two situations, the real and the unreal. Ya tenemos cuáles son las parejas que nosotros vamos a utilizar para estas estructuras. Así que lo único que tenemos que tener en cuenta es the structure, the subject plus which plus subject plus the unreal situation. Because in that case, when we are using this uh, verb, the wish, we are talking about unreal situation. So in that case, you need to remember that you are going to have a real a sentence in which you are living something in that moment and you are going to transform but uh, you are not going like like to change anything in that situation because it's something unreal it's not like we are going to say i'm going to the police and i will um, i don't know uh, take to the jail to someone so in that case, it is just unreal situation or something that we are thinking in that moment uh, related to the situation that we are living. So in that case, I'm going to add this information to the document that we have on a uh, Google Docs and you are going to have these structures um, if you want to practice. And I'm going to send you or Yes, I'm going to send you some examples or some exercises that you can uh, practice uh, solving because we uh, don't have enough time to solve those exercises. So I'm going to send to you because it is, uh, I think now it's easier to, for you to, to complete that sentence. So I will send to you some exercises in which you are going to transform um, some sentences into unreal situations. And remember that we are going to have two more sessions this week because we are going to end on Friday. So we are going to end this um, session here because it's time to end. And we are going to see each other tomorrow with a new topic. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. Good night. 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 Good night